I have been chatty this week, um, making a lot of more videos than I normally do. I thought about doing this one yesterday, but it got too late in the morning. So I'm going to do it now. I was thinking, I guess I got up yesterday thinking about profit and like not whether it's good or bad or the extent to which there's some kind of moral valence, but the dynamics of it as a concept uh, and as a sort of process. And so, and this is something I've been thinking about a lot. Um, so there's like, you know, what accountants call profit, and that's like the literal bottom line of an income statement. And then there's like what economists call profit, which is a little bit more academic, and that's kind of like, like if you were going to allocate capital, um, what, like what, how profitable is your allocation relative to the next best allocation. But then there's like the abstract one, and this is the thing that, one of the things that sort of got me thinking about this, and that is the book, How to Solve It, where he uses the term, Paul uses the term in an abstract sense, he's like, you know, like you can profit from solving a math problem, like that kind of, that kind of thing. And that and a couple of other things got me really thinking about like the notion of profit as a kind of like localized elimination of entropy, which is a kind of uh, Schrodinger kind of concept, like uh, when you sort of eat, you, you're not eating energy, you're, you're eating low entropy and pooping out high entropy kind of stuff. And so the idea of sort of profit as a sort of step change in like entropy and the sort of local elimination of entropy, entropy going down in a particular space at a particular time. And the way I kind of think about that, there's a concept of a, of a Schumpeterian profit. And that is the kind of profit that you get from inventing something, usually inventing something, not strictly inventing something, but it's like this sort of massive windfall. And uh, that was from a paper from Nordhaus who went on to do other things. But the idea of a Schumpeterian profit is like, uh, here, this paper was called The Schumpeterian Profits and the Alchemist Fallacy, and the idea was that if you were an alchemist and you figure out how to turn lead into gold, that'll make you really rich. But then the fact that you did that means you're going to have to like hire bodyguards and like hire security and like fortify your house. And then you're going to, how are you going to pay for all of that? Well, you're going to pay for it with gold. And eventually the, again, the sort of entropy in the environment, like you are the, the gold uh, uh, devaluates because um, you're spending it basically. So it, it, the, the sort of value of the secret of gold and the sort of the reason why Norhouse wrote that was to argue that uh, the people who actually invent a thing, even though there might be the single biggest beneficiary of the invention, the aggregate of, of all of the users of the invention actually benefit more and you can spend more to try to recoup. And he says, like, he figures it's like, it's like 5% or something like that, like you might get of the total value of an invention, whereas the aggregate of everybody else gets the other 95. And so you could say, he was sort of arguing, like, basically, that there is, like, a certain amount past which it just doesn't, it's not worth it to police, uh, like, intellectual property, for example. So if you were a company that was in the intellectual property business, like you or like, you know, you were trying to police copyright or something like that, like there's a certain amount you can get like more, like just, you know, you might be able to get that up to 10%, you know, of the total where the, the users of the thing get the other 90, but the, like what it'll cost you to do that will actually eat up your, 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 your profits from the, from the accountant perspective. 
So with that in mind, let's sort of think about like a genealogy of like how it works. And I'm getting like the point that I'm trying to make is if something is too profitable for too long, then something is kind of weird about that because you've got this kind of entropy sort of heat equation effect, you know, where you've got like the everything becomes warm, equally warm eventually. And so if you were to imagine like a, you know, proto civilization of people, I'm gonna get a Sharpie because you can't see that, you know, but if you were to imagine like a proto civilization of people, you know, they're in their village and there's no specialization, right? Like everybody has the same skills more or less. And so there's no, there's like no meaning, like dividing labor any one way is just as good as dividing labor any other way at that point. But then of course the civilization gets too big and you get this kind of like partition across like, you know, whatever the basket weavers and the, the hand ax makers or whatever the heck. And then what ends up happening is the sort of the specialization, so you still sort of equilibrate because the knowledge of like how to do the thing is permeable or not permeable, but it's, I mean, it's just leaky. Uh, and then, uh, so the, the, what happens is, is like there's, there's knowledge crossing these, this partition of, of expertise. And so, what so like the like this you sort of think of this like methodolo uh, methodological knowledge as being you know sort of like just bleeds out into the environment and it's like everybody knows how to read everybody knows how to tie your shoes everybody knows whatever and so you can kind of think of like pockets of like hyper specialization within that where somebody figures something out innovates and invent something and then they like manage to just totally mop up just because like their methodology is just like so much better than everybody else's. And you know, of course for the vast majority of the story of human civilization that just didn't happen very often. Um, like I like to think about shipping um, because like, like shipping is, everybody kind of understands what it is. It's not like farming where like, you know, you have to figure out how to grow plants. Like shipping is just like, I can move stuff left and right. Now you look at like the profit margins of shipping companies is like 5% or something like that. Like it's really low because, and I would argue that like shipping is, you know, you you've got the, the people who are in, on the inside and you got the people who are on the outside. And the people who are on the inside are all competing with each other. So like their information, like their methodological information gets, it's, it, it sort of bleeds out, you know, kind of like putting a tea bag in a hot water, it just diffuses. And so, uh, so, so basically like you've got the sh all the shippers and all the non shippers and the shippers, of course they're like a cartel, but you know, still, um, that doesn't help them very much. Um, because, uh, you know, like the, anybody can just put something on a, in a container and truck it over to wherever. And that's sort of the idea is that, uh, like there's not, there's nothing to know, notwithstanding like all of the like internal voodoo of, of it, which they've all sort of mastered and, and, and had an effect on. But you contrast that with say something like, you know, software, where these companies have they have like ridiculous profit margins because they like, like what they're doing is like still like a little bit mysterious, but it's like not only mysterious to each other, it's also mysterious to everybody who's not making it. And you also see this kind of thing in, you know, say like banking crisis era. I mean, and even beyond that, like anything to do with finance since they sit in nineties or something like that. It's like, I guess the point is it's like, if, if something is too profitable for too long, you got to ask the question, like, why hasn't the knowledge of how to do whatever it was, like, why hasn't that, like, bled out into the environment and made them less pro profitable? And that is really the the sort of crux of it. It's like, why, why are these things profitable? Why is software too, so profitable? Why is finance so profitable? 
And you get to some sort of really interesting answers when you when you when you come to that. And so, uh, yeah, that's just sort of the gist of it. Is just sort of, you know, profit as information gap, and and as a uh, as as a local elimination of entropy. And you gotta wonder, you know, where is that entropy going? I mean, entropy's not conserved, but it also doesn't go down because that's the second law of thermodynamics. Anyway, I'm gonna finish my coffee.